Hey, what's going on, guys? Gunshed here, and welcome. So, what we're doing today is a 600 mile owner's review of my Vistrom 650. And you may be saying, why on earth have you chosen 600 miles? God, I hate this road, it's so bloody bumpy. So, Vistrom 650. Um, so, I've had this bike now for uh, since. What's the date today? It's October the 7th. I picked it up on the 2nd of September. I've had it just over a month. We've already done 600 miles, so that's a good sign of things. The first thing you notice about it, um, obviously if you're a shorter rider when you climb on it, is it is quite a tall bike. Um, I've put the low seat high, seat, lower seat on it, um, which apparently lowers it from 835mm to 8 25 sorry 815 millimeters however my Kawasaki R6F was 815 and I could flat foot that and I can't flat foot this so worth noting the first thing you get on when you notice the bike is it looks incredibly big um, but it doesn't feel heavy it's lovely and lovely and nimble and it's fantastic around town It's got lots of nice low down punch, it's really smooth and it feels really really nimble which is great. The mirrors are fantastic, you can see both mirrors, that four behind me, it's sitting, you know, it's a safe distance but you can see him in both my mirrors. Um, the mirrors are really really good and there's just no vibrations through them. Well while everyone's uh, stationary, we shall take a minute to look at the tack, um, full of information, got a nice big speedo there, gear indicator. Um, Mileometer, engine temperature, outside temperature, clock, traction level, and range at the bottom. Now you can change using the button on the uh, left control, the arrows left and right. Just here. So scrolling the up button does the top thing. So you've got odometer, trip one, trip two, oil level, odometer. Bottom. We've got range. Oh, let me get moving. Voltage. Instant fuel economy. Average fuel economy, which as you can see, I'm getting about 65.4 gallon. A little bit under what they're saying. I think they say about 75. Um, but whether or not that's just because I've been doing lots of countryside riding and the range. Back to the range, we're saying 161. I have noticed the range computer is a little bit iffy. When you fill the tank up it says 320 miles. By the time you've got a mile down the road it's probably dropped to 290. I don't know whether that's because it's... Um, brakes work well. He got his ABS off and I stopped in time so that's good. As you can see the speedo is lovely and clear as is the gear position indicator which is useful, it stops you hunting for uh, that imaginary 7th gear um, which is great, I actually miss that from having my AR6 the seat's nice and comfy, even though I say I've got the low seat which just means less cushioning um, the stock seat, I rode with the stock seat and uh, it was slightly dangerous in terms of ground clearance in terms of me being able to reach the ground but it was brilliantly comfy and the riding position is nice, my legs are just bent slightly under 90 degrees, my arms are nice and outstretched, nice and wide handlebars. So in terms of things like that, it's all good. And it is really, really manoeuvrable, which is great for such a big bike. Now I haven't given it full beans, and um, the reason being the Obviously, 600 miles, I'm still running it in. I've got to run it into a 1,000. I think I could take it up to about 7,000 RPM after first service. Now, the one probably glaringly obvious difference between my bike and a standard V-Strom 650 is, obviously, my big MRA screen. And the reason I changed that, and I do think it's a well worth note point worth noting 
is the standard screen is absolutely abysmal. Um, there is not a position under the sun you can get unless you're eight feet tall or three feet tall where you can be to get your head out of turbulence. So one of these screens, uh, it's an MRA one, I think it's about £100, something like that. Seems to take away most of the turbulence. I've still got to tinker around with it and fettle with it and stuff like that. But because it's a V-twin, it's quite nice. You've got quite nice low down punch. Um, great for coming off roundabouts, things like that. But just around town, you can nip into that gap really nicely. It feels like a bike you could do some serious distance on. It is really, really nice to ride. Happily sits at 70, about 5,000 RPM. No problems at all. And if you were to uh, just speed up a little bit, it does still climb and that's in six gear. So you still have got that pull. It just takes a little bit of time to uh, kick in. But it's enough power for, you know, most bike riding. If you want to go set a track record on the Nürburgring, this is not the bike to do it on. But it's usable power. The one thing I have noticed because of the riding position and the big screen and things, it seems like you're going a little bit slower than you actually are. So if you're coming from something like a ER6 with similar power, just make a note of what speed you're being sat at because uh, chances are you'll probably be doing a bit quicker than you think you are. Like I did on the way back from collecting it. A, the traction control is really simple, you press the select button and then those arrows on the mode thing and then select again to confirm it. Um, you can't change it while on the move. And if you turn it off when you turn the bike on, again it will come back on. So. Uh, I just keep it in one which is the least intrusive setting and the only time I've noticed it was when I was going over a humpback bridge and tried to overtake someone I saw the light kick in. If I hadn't seen the light kick in I wouldn't have felt it come on. Um, so you can have it on, less intrusive or off, um, so two being maximum, one being the less intrusive option. So I just keep it on that. But this is a bike that you could happily, happily cover some distance on. Um, it's not. There are some vibrations through the pegs and bars, but nothing uncomfortable. Overall, though, I am very impressed with this bike. Um, I think it's going to do what I want it to brilliantly well. In the corners and things like that, my this is fun. But my R6F is more fun. I will say, um, if you're looking at optional extras, don't go with Suzuki um, in terms of luggage and stuff like that. They are an absolute rip-off. Um, I've always told you, if you do some really good kit, so I got the accessory bars from them, so the engine bars, they were half the price. Sub guard, which was put on during this service that was half the price of the Suzuki one it's made of metal the Suzuki where well, it's made of aluminium I think the Suzuki one was made of plastic what else have I have fitted center stand that is Suzuki and the seat is Suzuki because those are the only two come bits I could get done and yeah so all in all not too bad I mean to put it into perspective the top box and mounting bracket for the Suzuki is £600 um, and that is £300 more than my larger Chevy top box that I've yet to actually use because I'm in the habit of taking a backpack. I've fitted the plate, I just haven't done that. But yeah, it's worth noting that the Chevy, um, the, the Suzuki accessories are very dear for what you get. Yeah, it feels quite upright. Um, it feels nice and heavy, not too heavy, it feels manoeuvrable when you're moving, but it's quite heavy, so I'm only of uh, a smaller stature and moving it around on gravel is fairly difficult. I know um, in terms of pushing it around, not actually driving off the gravel. Yeah, it's not ideal, so uh, 
But overall, I'm really, really impressed with this bike. For the money, I think it's a great bike. Um, I haven't really noticed anything falling off, so I'd say the build quality is reasonable. I mean, it's got enough power, I can overtake a cyclist up a hill. The tyres, I haven't pushed the tyres, so I can't really comment on those. They seem to do an adequate job. I haven't felt them slippy slidey in the wet. Um, I've ridden on wet roads. I haven't ridden in... Uh, yeah, just like coming off that, it just changes direction so easily. And that's this one hand is sweet from side to side to side. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. And take care.